devised this away, except for those of you who are catching up on Monday's lesson. Um, we're going to go ahead and jump right in and start where we left off. So this class, because I think every class is at a little, at a pace, a little different uh, spot. But how far did we get in this class? Did we get, did I give you an answer for your body paragraph? Did I give you a sentence done? I did, okay. So then let me just recap that. We started on our body paragraphs, or we started planning our body paragraphs on our outline. I talked about how your body paragraphs follow the eight format, answer, prove, explain. So answer, you're basically introducing whatever reason that body paragraph is going to be about. So if the reason was it can help you resolve a problem, then you would use one of these sentence stems to introduce that reason. This answer statement would be the very first sentence of that first body paragraph. Yes? So you could choose any one. You fill in the blank with the first reason. We all have one down. Does anybody need, need that slide up for a minute? All right. So here's an example. Sometimes in order to find out what one is truly capable of, people have to take a chance. That's the same reason that I have here. This is the body paragraph from the outline. And then after the A, we look at the P, which P is you prove your reason by supporting it with evidence. Now your evidence should be a specific and developed example. So in this class, I think I gave the example about my friend Liz joining the debate team. Does that sound familiar? Or did I talk about the office here? Yeah. The office? Yeah, All right. Well, I should say something about the office, but none of us would. None, none of you guys have watched the office. So I talked about the office, or I tried to talk about the office, but that would have been my specific and developed example. You should have brainstormed on your prompt, you should have brainstormed examples to go with your reason, yes? One thing that I wanna mention about your examples is that when you start writing your example, they should not be hypothetical. So this, this usually hurts students. By hypothetical, I mean that they're not real. So you start with something like, let's say you have a crush on a boy and you wanna, you wanna be friends with them. Like if you take a chance and introduce yourselves, whatever, right? Is this a real example? No. How do we know it's not real? What words did I use that make it obvious that it's not let's real? Say. Let's say, right? Or if I said, imagine if you um, wanna do something but you're scared, if you don't take that chance, now I'm not talking about anything specific because I used imagine if, right? So you always want to avoid the let's say, the imagine if, those are called hypothetical examples. Give me a real example. Now I don't know if I got to explain this far in this class, um, but some kids will tell me like, well miss, I don't, I don't want to expose my, like if I'm going to talk about my friend, I don't want to expose my friend. Then just change the name, okay? No one's going to come and check whether the name is correct. Um, another thing that some students do is that they absolutely cannot think of an example. Make one up and pretend it happened to your best friend or pretend it happened to you. Okay? So like if you want to talk about like, oh, if you like someone, take a chance and introduce yourself, but you don't have an actual example, make it up and say, my best friend had the biggest crush on this boy and, you know, she was always so shy and yada yada, right? Make it up. No one's going to come and check. I had a kid who, every single essay, he lied the entire time. And he was like the best liar because sometimes I would believe it and I'm like, oh, did you really move to Cal from California? And he's like, no, nah, I made that up. Every time, it's, it was always a lie. But I never knew because he made it sound like it was real. And he used real names and everything. And that was fine, he got a four on his essay. Um, so anyway, you can use peaches to, as, your, as your foundation for examples. So you can use, by peaches, I mean it could be personal examples, examples from entertainment, like a movie or show, examples from art, current events, history, or sports, okay? Have you guys had time to, and again, I'm sorry because I can't remember where I left off in each class, did you guys have time to plan out details in the proof section of your outline? 
So some of us, some of us did, some of us, raise your hand if you need time to plan out details in the outline. All right, so give me a second. Uh, what we're gonna do is in a second, I'm gonna let you plan out your details, but I wanna move on to the E first, the explain, so that way you can just do all of it, okay? So once you plan out details in that P section, the last part is to explain. So just as important as your example is your explanation of how your example proves your point. So if I'm talking about, if my example is about uh, my friend taking a chance and introducing herself to some boy, and you know they ended up dating and you know now they're married or whatever right if i go off talking about this and giving information about this example and then i just end it there i don't explain how it shows that she took a chance why it was important for her to take a chance you may be thinking okay so what like what does this have to do with the prompt right like why are you telling me about your friend i don't care right well, I'm thinking is why is this your prime example or why well I have several, okay? I had Jim and Pam, but, but you guys didn't know the office. But anyway, you may be wondering, what does this have to do with the prompt? What, what, what is the, how is this important, right? That's why explanation is important, because you have to make the connection between your example and your point, yes? So then the, the explanation is going to tell you why that example is important. So you can use any of these sentence stems. I'm gonna go back to the other example about my friend joining the debate team. I talked about that here. Um, she was scared of public speaking. She joined the debate team to overcome that fear. She took a chance, because that was a big deal for her, so she was like terrified of, of presenting in public, or like presenting to audiences. And she did that to like, to, to fix this issue that she had with herself. So now after I explain all of that in my example, I'm gonna explain why that example is important. So I'm gonna say something like, sometimes in order to um, see what you're truly capable of and overcome your fears, you have to take a chance because otherwise you won't ever push yourself to do something out of your comfort zone. That's my explanation, yes? Or an example. So you can take any one of these sentence stems. So let me show you my body paragraph. So I have my answer. Sometimes in order to find out what one is truly capable of, people have to take a chance. My example here is my friend's fear of public speaking, the anxiety symptoms she experienced every time she needed to present at school. So she had like sweaty palms, shaky voice, her mind would go blank and then what she did to overcome the fear of public speaking. I also chose my sentence stem for my explanation in purple here. And then I turned it into a paragraph. So it says, now the green is my answer. The green says, sometimes in order to find out what one is truly capable of, people have to take a chance. There's my reason what one is truly capable of. Then my example is in blue. My friend Elizabeth is one of the friendliest beings on earth. She truly knows how to put a smile on everyone's face and can make the new kid at school feel completely welcome. However, friendly as she was, Elizabeth had a tremendous fear of public speaking. Anytime Elizabeth had to give presentations in class, she experienced a vast array of anxiety symptoms. The moment Elizabeth reached the front of the room, of any room, she would instantly forget what she needed to say, her palms would get sweaty, and her voice would tremble more than students sitting in freezing classrooms. I did a simile. Public speaking was an absolute nightmare for Elizabeth. Eventually, Elizabeth realized that she could no longer allow this fear to consume her as much as it, di as it did, so she decided to do something about it. Elizabeth decided to combat this fear by joining the school's debate team. This decision was a huge chance to take for Elizabeth, for she knew that the outcome could be terrible. Nonetheless, the debate team taught Elizabeth strategies that helped her remain cool, calm, and collected. This club also allowed Elizabeth to slowly ease into public speaking. 
She first practiced debating with small groups and then slowly gathered larger audiences. That is my example. Is it detailed? Do I add a lot of detail in there? Yes. I don't just say, my friend, um, my friend was scared to speak in public, so she joined the debate team, and after joining the debate team, she got over it. That's, I added lots of detail. That's how your example should be, detailed. And then in purple, my explanation. Elizabeth had every reason not to join a debate team, but she took a chance and did it anyway because she wanted to see what she was truly capable of. By joining the debate team, Elizabeth was able to learn, to learn public speaking strategies and discover her true communication capabilities after overcoming her fear. So I explained why this is important and proves this in green. Does that make sense? You need to have all three parts. Yes? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you about 10 minutes. I'm gonna put the sentence stem for the E back up. So you can choose one. So there are the sentence stems for the E. I'm gonna give you about 10 minutes to plan out your first body paragraph. Now, raise your hand if you have two reasons in your thesis. I don't know if anybody did that, so I'm, I'm curious. Did anybody have two reasons for their thesis? Okay, raise your hand if you have two examples for your essay. Do we only have the one? Okay, because if you have two reasons or two examples, that's a body paragraph for each, okay? Um, so it's gonna give you the other sentence stems. But if, you don't, if we don't need them, I won't turn the slide. All right, so 10 minutes to start planning your proof and your explanation. Yes? So when we, so you wrote it in your outline, when we write our essay, just know your body paragraphs should be longer than what you wrote in your outline. Your outline is you hashing out the details, right? But as you can see with my example, the body paragraph will have more details. You have the A, the P, and the E. If you had a second body paragraph, then you would do the same thing all over again. And I have sentence stems for that. Um, but if you don't need them, you don't need them, right? So the answer, all I did was add the word also because now we're talking about a second thing. So it says, it is also important to take a chance because blank. Or another reason why it's necessary to take a chance is blank. So we just changed it a little bit so that it transitions correctly, right? We do the same thing with P. And then we do the same thing with E. Yes? You never have more than two reasons in your essay or more than, um, or if you have one reason, you can have two examples for that one reason. But that's it. You never want to have more than two body paragraphs. And that's because there's just not a lot of space on those star papers. So if you have a lot of body paragraphs, you're not going to be able to be detailed. So there's no space. Robbie, please wake up. Yeah, or lift your head up, please. Your conclusion. There's several things that you could do for your conclusion. All right, so conclusion. Um, you can, there's several things that you can do here. Now, the conclusion, if you ever start running out of space on your star paper, the conclusion is probably that you, I, don't cut it out completely. You need to end your essay some way, right? You need to wrap things up. But if your conclusion if you've run out of paper and your conclusion needs to be a sentence or too long, that's okay. That really is like the least that is graded. Uh, like that's the, the, the thing that weighs the least uh, out of your entire essay, okay? So don't ever cut down on your details or your examples or anything like that to make space for the conclusion. Because that's the, the like I said, it weighs the less. Um, so you can restate your thesis in a different manner. So if I said in my thesis at the very beginning, it is sometimes necessary to take a chance because you never know what you're truly capable of, then I could say in my, in my conclusion, um, people find out what their true capabilities are if they take chances. I just switched it around, right? It's basically saying the same thing, just reworded it. So you can do that. Um, you can go back to your hook. So if my hook at the beginning 
was talking about the roller coaster being scary but being one of the best things, right? Um, then it says, it may be one of the most daunting rides in your life, or taking chances may be one of the most daunting things in your life, one of the most daunting rides in your life, but it could end up being one of your best experiences. So again, going back to that hook. Or you could provide a lesson or a theme. Taking a chance in order to overcome your fear may help you realize your true capabilities. Whatever you do, do not add a new reason in your, in your conclusion. So if your thesis talked about um, taking chances to find out what you're truly capable of, don't say, if you take a chance, um, you know, you may get something good out of it. That's not what you said in your thesis, right? Now you're giving me a different reason that you've never talked about, but all of a sudden you're throwing one in before you end your, story, your essay. You don't want to do that. So just make sure that you stick to whatever you have written about. Does that make sense? All right, I'm going to give you four minutes to write something down for your conclusion. All right. So hopefully we got our conclusion down. Yes, something at least. So in a second, I'm going to give you the start paper so you can write your essay. There's a couple of things that you need to know. First of all, you cannot write outside the box. If you naturally write like big, you might want to um, write a little bit smaller so that you don't cut yourself short, right? Also, I've had students before skip lines, like, oh, the first line is for the title, so I'm going to skip it. You don't need a title. That does not help you in any way, shape, or form, and you're just cutting down your already very limited space. So don't skip lines. Um, before you turn it in, so we, we remember the ABCDs of on-demand writing. The D was to detect errors. So before you turn it in, um, go through it, revise it. Go ahead, Donna. Go through it, revise it, and make sure that you, you're using punctuation, that your um, words, like if you wanna, if you wanna grab a, a dictionary, my dictionary and replace some words here and there with the thes like by looking them up in the thesaurus, right? To increase your vocabulary, you can do that as well. Um, make sure that you don't have like small, choppy sentences, right? We wanna, if you can, include some compound and complex sentences. Just a reminder, the sentence patterns for compound and complex are up there, in case you don't remember, they're up there. So you can always refer back to those. This is a test grade, so I just want to make sure that you guys are taking your time writing it and then taking your time revising and editing it before you turn it in. Yes? But we've got all the, we've got the hard parts down because it's the thinking it out, right? We've got the outline filled out. So now it's just a matter of taking that and transferring it over to our paper. So let me go ahead and pass this for you guys. And then once you get this, you can get started. Just make sure your phones are put away. Um, and then obviously, Julia and Rachel, you guys are still watching Last Monday's lesson, so it's fine.